Hello everyone and welcome to another video of Do The Work. Here we're going to cover question 28 of the math proficiency test for teachers in Ontario. We're given a sequence of four terms, 16, uh, 1,683, 1,598, 1,513, 1,428. And we're, it says that the pattern continues to decrease by the same amount. What is the ninth term in this pattern? So before we get going, I, I would appreciate if you could hit the subscribe button below and click the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. The first step to solving any math problem is to understand what the problem is asking and understand the theory behind it. So here I, I realized that I forgot to add the link, but well, I'll just change the wording here, but the proper link will be in the description below and in the card in the top right corner of your video as well. So what we have here is a sequence. A sequence is just a list of numbers separated by commas. And what is the thing that de decreases every time? Like how much does it decrease every time? So we can find this by finding the common, common difference between the two. So common difference. So that would be the first thing we do. And to do so, what we would do is just 16. I'll do it with a calculator just so we were, we're sure here it'd be 1683 minus 1598 and that's 85. So the common difference is we subtract 85 every time and we can check this by doing the next pair of numbers. So it's 1598 minus 1513 equals so it's 85. And if you want, so that's how much you subtract every time. So that would be minus 85, minus 85, minus 85. So if you want, you could do that by hand, right? Just do it one by one by one. So the next one would be 1428 minus 85 and so on. But in mathematics, we don't like doing that. We It's all about extracting patterns, finding a formula. So if they ask the 1000th term, then we can still answer that. We, we're not stuck to just a ninth term, right? So turns out the formula is this, and it should make sense a little bit. This is the nth term. A is the first term. So that's just the index, like where, which term you're at. And then that's the common difference. Common difference. So here for uh, step one, we found that D was equal to negative 85 because you subtract 85. If it was positive, then it would be like if we go up by 85 every time, then D would be 85. So let's try to understand where our formula comes from. Well, we need to know where we start from. So that's A. And then let's say we want A, so A1 would be just a first term. So it needs to be a. So when n is one, one minus one is zero. So that's why the d doesn't matter. So that's where the n minus one comes from. And then let's say we want n two or a two, then n would be two. So then it would just be uh, plus one times the common difference. So then it's the number of times you apply that common difference to the first term. So if you're like 20 terms away, then you would apply it 19 times essentially, right? So we now that we have this, we can do step two. So I'll write formula. And here it would be a n is equal to a, which is 1683 plus n minus one times the difference, which is negative 85. And if we want, we could even simplify that, but we, we don't need to, right? Then we could do just a, a nine, which is equal to 1683 plus nine minus one times negative 85. So this I'll do in the calculator. So that's 1683 
uh, and it's plus eight because that's nine minus one and then minus 85. So I'll just write minus eight times 85. But then on calculator, it's 1003 and that's answer number B. So we're done. But let's dig a bit deeper, right? Let's the, the third step to solving a math problem is always to build intuition. So let's look at our formula a little bit more. So a n is just if we simplify this part, we would multiply each term. So essentially, it's negative 85 n. So I'll write it like this negative 85 n. And then it's plus 1683 plus 85. So I'll do that in in the calculator. So 16 83 plus 85. That's 1768. So that's plus 1768. What kind of equation does this look like graphically? Is it a quadratic? Is it a line? What is it, right? So or maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll put it here. So it's obvious that it's this thing, I'll put a little arrow. So like this, it's obvious that it's this equation. Well, turns out this is the in the format m x plus b, right? Our m is just the common difference. Our n is x. And then our b is the y intercept. We can look at this Desmos, the link will be in the description below. And the question I ask you is what is the equation of this line? I plotted all the points. Here it's all the terms as uh, your x axis is just the n, the y axis is just the value of the term. And it looks like a line, right? So that makes sense. Well, you could look at it by hand. Um, it goes down by 85 each time for one. So your m your m is negative 85 over one and your b well you need to go up by 85 right you would need to go up by 85 to find your y intercept that's why we do plus 85 and if you want you could even generalize the the formula and but before we generalize the formula let's just look what happens when we put our line our line has this equation and you can see that if we let the point play, it's for any value of n, even if it's a decimal, right? So it's a line here. That's an arithmetic sequence. It's a linear relation because you're adding fixed amount every time, whereas a geometric sequence, you're multiplying or dividing. So for example, let's say you're adding uh, like it's doubling every time Well, you would add a different amount every time. So let's try to generalize the y equals mx plus b formula every time. So what we have here is just a n and then it would be a plus n d minus d. n is the variable a and d are constants. So really what we have is I'll write it down here. So it's a n is equal to n times d or d times n. So d is your slope and then plus a minus d. So that's your y equals mx plus b. y is equal to mx plus b. So that's your general equation. So your m is just d and it makes sense if you look down here for what the equation we found. And then your b, I'll put it that in purple. That's just a minus b. So I hope this helped for all the problems, not just this problem. And you can always come back to this video for reference, right? So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video of Do The Work.